Aries. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for December of 2021. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kale Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. And I'm Julia Mijas in San Francisco. Well, Aries, this month's horoscope shows an emphasis in your ninth house of growth and travel. So you might plan some growth experiences this month. And if this horoscope tickles your curiosity about that, you can find a link for a natal and transit reading in the YouTube description below where you can find out a lot more. Well, Saturn square Uranus makes its final connection this month. It's been dogging us all year. So if you have anything in your chart between 7 and 13 degrees of any fixed sign at all, meaning Taurus, Aquarius, Leo, or Scorpio, you've definitely been feeling this. Uh, let's go to the chart. So you'll see that Saturn is here traveling along through your 11th house of community and friends. Uranus is in your second house of finance. So Uranus this year has probably been bringing up some shifts and changes, maybe some radical activities, uh, some some perhaps startling experiences for you financially, or even some experiments relative to your diet. And uh, meanwhile, Saturn has been kind of putting the clamp down for you in the arena of friends and community. So you may feel like you're judged in your circle of friends. So this has been an interesting dynamic, and uh, you can find out more about it in the video that we made about it in the December news playlist on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology. Uh, Julia, I think you have some news about Mercury, Mars, and Venus. Well, I do, Jamie. Hi, Aries. I'll start with Mercury. That's the planet that represents our mind. And wherever it is in the month uh, is where we usually spend a lot of our, uh, where we expend a lot of our mental energy. So Mercury is moving really, really fast this month. And it's going to be in your 10th house on December 13th. Now, the 10th house is the house of career. It also represents your public reputation a lot. Um, so when Mercury is in this house, you could be spending a lot of time thinking thinking, strategizing, and planning about your career in a big way. Mm -hmm. If you are not in a current job right now, then this can be a great transit for working on your resume and maybe doing a little bit of networking, contacting old people, clients, or, or um, other co-workers that you've worked up with for references. And then Mars, the planet of action and activity, starts the month in your eighth house, and it's there for the first 13 days of the month. So when Mars is in the eighth house, the eighth house represents social taboos. It represents research and investigation. It's really Pluto's house, the house of Scorpio. So it's got kind of a intense verboten quality too. So with Mars in the eighth house for the first 13 days of the month, you might be driven to investigate or research something. You also might be a little bit more um, drawn to activities that might have a little bit more uh, social taboos involved in them as well. And uh, the eighth house can also represent other people's money. And Mars is the uh, archetype of the warrior, so there could be some conflict around money as well. Now, on December 13th, Mars goes into your ninth house, where it's going to spend the rest of the month, and the ninth house is a really different place than the eighth. It's a lot more lighter, optimistic, more adventurous in a lot of ways, so when Mars comes into this house, it's going to be a time where you might want to just get out and take a trip, or go on an adventure, or do something to expand yourself, and that's a wonderful, wonderful um, feeling to have, but sometimes Mars in the ninth can make us very, very stir crazy if there are circumstances in our lives that don't allow us to kind of go out on some adventures or take some travel. So it can get people a little bit feisty there. And then the last planet I want to talk about is Venus, the planet of art, beauty, and relationships. And she's going to be in your 10th house all month. And she is slowing down and will go retrograde on the 19th. So she's going retrograde in your 10th house, and she's going to be retrograde for six whole weeks all the way to January 29th. So so when Venus is in the 10th house, the 10th house is your career, it's your public reputation. Venus is the planet of love. 
So when Venus goes retrograde in this house, retrograde times are times of review in terms of the themes of whatever that planet represents. And with Venus, that can be relationship review. So when during this cycle, you might be reviewing your current relationship in terms of whether it can help you in your career or even your public standing. You know, the 10th house is a very public house. It has a lot to do with social status. So you may be reviewing your current relationship under these terms. Is your partner helping you with your career? Is your partner helping to kind of bolster your, your social status and your reputation in some way? Or, you know, if you're not in a relationship, maybe you're thinking about those qualities for your next relationship too. And another thing to keep in mind when Venus goes retrograde is a lot of your exes might be coming out of the woodwork. So be prepared for that. Yep, so true. Well, the first of this month's moons happens on December 3rd, and it's also an eclipse. It is a um, solar eclipse and new moon that happens right here in your ninth house, the sun and the moon uh, coming together. It's a little hard to see, but there they are filling up this ninth house, which is really where that theme of growth and expansion, travel and adventure is coming from. Uh, and Julia spoke of that, you know, Mars, a little later in the month, Mars moves in here, Mercury starts the month in here. This is really where the action is for you this month. So we're calling this one Heal Breaches by How You Act on Your Beliefs. An eclipse is a time when we have to look at our shadow. A solar eclipse is an occasion for us to be reminded of our shadow, meaning, you know, the dark stuff that we don't like to look at every day that we'd rather put behind us. That's our shadow material. And um, a solar eclipse can show us that stuff through how we behave. And this is the house of, of beliefs, of worldview, as well as growth and expansion, travel, and multiculturalism. So this is really an occasion for connecting with people who may have different beliefs than you and, uh, and healing, bringing healing into those connections by how you behave. Um, so then we have this month's second moon, which happens, as is typical, about two weeks later. And that one is a <clears throat> full moon in Gemini. It's happening on the 18th. And here you can see the sun and the moon opposite each other. That moon is falling in the third house, which is a house of words and communication, thoughts and ideas, conversation, also curiosity and um, discovering ideas, batting them around. And that opposes the moon here still in the house of the bigger picture. So this moon is a great occasion for you specifically with this moon in your third house for discovering your voice in conversation with others. Uh, we're calling this moon Broadened Minds Gain Bigger Hearts. There is a distinctly expansive quality to this moon. It's not an eclipse, so the tone is going to be a lot lighter. And um, because a full moon has this a relational aspect. It's the moon and the sun, you know, opposing each other, facing off, like um, in, uh, in that dialogue. Um, this could bring up a lot of conversations, which could be very emotional conversation, actually, uh, in which you or another person try to persuade each other of a different point of view. So then we have um, the seasonal change, which happens on December 21st. And the sun moves into Capricorn. And, and really, by the end of the month, there's a large pile of things in your 10th house of career. So towards the end of the month, the theme begins to shift away from growth and expansion in Sagittarius and towards career and shining the spotlight there. I like to think of the sun as the spotlight of attention. And it's been said that what you put your attention on grows. And um, attention really is like sunlight in that way. And so wherever the sun, whatever house the sun is traveling through in your chart is a good place to bring some high quality attention and create some growth. And, uh, and that means career starting towards the end of this month. Well, that's what we, what we have for you today, Aries. Hope you enjoyed it.
You can find this horoscope for your um, for your sign on our website, pandoraastrology.com in the horoscopes tab. And if this is your rising sign, go ahead and look up your sun sign. And if this is your sun sign, go look up the horoscope for your rising sign because you'll find it works even better than this one did. You can find the news of the month on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology, or on our forecast page on our website. And if you're interested in a class or a reading, you can find that good stuff on our website too. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye.